Hey guys and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon Origins. Today we're going to be looking at Clampurl, Huntail and Gorbess. So let's get started. First that we have Clampurl or in its Japanese name, Perlulu. It is the bivalve of Pokemon and number 366 in the National Dex. It stands 0.4 meters or 1 foot 4 inches and weighs 52.5 kilograms or 115.7 pounds. Clampurl is a water type and is also the only Pokemon that evolves by trade holding one of two different items. Now you'll see in the video it says just through the use of two different items, however obviously that's wrong because of Flareon, but it's just simplified because I couldn't get all the text in. So, Clampurl are a blue Pokemon with a dark blue outer shell and a fragile blue body inside composed of six spherical extensions surrounding its small pearl-like spherical pink head. Clampurl's eyes are usually closed and it has white circular patches on the side of its head, along with a silver colouring on the rim of their shell. Clam Pearl is possibly based on an oyster or a giant clam, as they're both very similar to its design. Its appearance and its evolutions also suggest that it could be based on roe, which is basically the egg mass before it becomes a fish. There are no gender differences between Clam Pearl, and Clam Pearl's shiny form has a purple shell and a yellowish orange possibly head. Pokedex entries tell us that Clampurl's shell is rock hard and also that during its lifetime it makes a single pearl, which it presumably is its head, but that's not actually told. Then looking at names here, we can see that Pearl Lulu is a combination of Pearl and Lulu, which is slang for someone or something that is exceptional or remarkable, a reference to the pearl inside it. It may also involve Lulu, which is Arabic for pearl. The English name Clam Pearl is a combination of clamp or clam, both references to its clam-like appearance and also that clams can clamp shut, and also pearl, again referencing its pearl that it makes over its lifetime. Taking a quick look at the sprites for the generations, we can see when introduced in Generation 3 it had a simple, straight head-on looking uh, and no change between the generations in Emerald, just sort of closing its shell slightly and moving around. The back sprite here, the shell actually isn't really that much like a shell, more of a, a fan or a hand. Then moving into Generation 4, it does turn slightly towards like, the left, um, but apart from that, there's no change. And the back sprite here actually looks like a proper shell this time, rather than what we saw just now in Generation 3. And then in Generation 5, it's the same as Generation 4, pretty much. And the back sprite here, you can actually see the bottom half of this shell as well, showing that it's sort of like a normal shell shape, the typical shell shape you can see. Finally then looking at size for Clam Pearl, we can see standing at 0.4 meters or 1 foot 4 inches, it's not a very big Pokemon, but then again it's based on a clam, so you wouldn't want, to want it to be too big, otherwise you might accidentally walk inside Clam Pearl, which I don't think you'd want to do. Now if we take a look at the first of Clam Pearl's evolutions, Huntail. The Japanese name is also Huntail, so there's no difference between the names. It is the Deep Sea Pokemon, and is number 367 in the National Dex. Huntail is 1.7 meters or 5 foot 7 inches long, since it is a serpentine Pokemon, and weighs 27 kilograms or 59.5 pounds. Like Clampurl, it's a pure water type, and it will evolve from Clampurl when traded while holding the deep sea tuff. Huntail is a light blue aquatic Pokemon with a serpentine body. It has orange semicircular spines running down the length of its back and one on each side of its lower jaw. Huntail's body is dotted with white spots that are bordered by orange rings. Two of these rings are on its face, which are meant to resemble nostrils, and two are on its tail, which resemble eyes. It has a large mouth filled with sharp teeth and an orange shell-shaped crest on its head. Huntail is likely based on a gulper eel or a viper fish. However, it does closely resemble the rarely seen oarfish, mainly because of its orange-coloured crest and fins. Like Clam Pearl, there are no gender differences between Huntail, and Huntail's shiny form is a light green coloured body with slightly lighter scales and spines and stuff like that. Pokedex entries tell us that Huntail live deep in the sea and that they use their tail, which is shaped like a small fish, to attract prey and then obviously attack them. The name Huntail is a combination of Hunt or Hunter and Tail. Then if we take a quick look at Huntail sprites, in Generation 3 it's a simple sprite, however in this generation it does seem to have a very large head compared to its body, and the back sprite here is 
it seems to be a smaller head, but then again, all you can see in the Generation 3 back sprite is its head and then a bit of its body there. In Generation 4, it kind of flips its sprite up so the head is above the rest of the body, and it gets a bit smaller in size so it doesn't look quite as weird. The back sprite here is obviously the head, and you can see a good bit of its back. Then finally in Generation 5, we can see it goes sort of back to its original sprite in Generation 3, however its head is now in proportion and it's in a slightly different stance. And the back sprite here is the opposite really, you can see its head is now above its tail area, and you can see pretty much the whole back there including its tail which looks a lot like the next Pokemon we're going to look at, Gorbis. Anyway, before we do that, let's look at Huntail's size. Being 1.7 meters or 5 foot 7 inches long, you'd expect it to be quite a large Pokemon, however the, the image here obviously isn't a straight image, so it's, it's not that really, it's not really that big. Finally for today, if we look at Gorbis, the second of Clampole's evolutions, we can see its Japanese name is Sakurabis, and it is the South Sea Pokemon. It is also number 368 in the National Dex, appearing after Huntail. Similar to Huntail, it is a Serpentine Pokemon, and is 1.8 meters long, or 5 foot 11 inches, and weighs 22.6 kilograms, or 49.8 pounds. Similarly to Clampurl and Huntail, it is a pure water type, and will evolve from a Clampurl when traded holding a deep sea of scale. Gorbis resembles a pink eel-like creature with a long thin mouth. It has two purple shell-like structures on its chest, which actually cause it to resemble a mermaid. Gorbis also has a purple tipped antenna-like fin on top of its head, and a similar if shorter fin below its mouth, and with two small eyelashes on each eye. Its tail has two bands of lighter coloration, and at the tip of it there is a rounded purple fin. Gorbis is likely based on a snipe eel, but could also closely resemble a pipefish, as well as like Huntail and all fish, and also a long-nosed chimera. Like the rest of the members of this family, there are no gender differences between Gorbis, and Gorbis' shiny form has a golden coloured body and a slightly darker uh, sort of highlight to you know, the, the top of the fin and the tail. Pokedex entries tell us that it lives at the bottom of the sea, and in the springtime, its pink body becomes more vivid with the rise of the water temperatures. The Japanese name Sakurabis is a combination of Sakura, which means cherry blossom, which actually refers to its colouring, and Abyss. Gorbis may be a combination of Gore, to stab, and Abyss. It may also be a play on Gorgeous, referring to its design. And Biss may also refer to the Bissel threads and muscles used to attach themselves to rocks. Then looking at the sprites quickly, we can see in Generation 3 it had a fairly simple design, not much happening there, and the back sprite is simply its head, you can't actually see a whole lot there. Then in Generation 4, its sprite, similar to Huntail's, flips over so its head is now sort of below, and then in the back sprite there you can see its head sort of raises up slightly, you can see sort of less of its body. Then in Generation 5, it returns to a similar design to a Generation 3 sprites, however it's more sort of horizontal, and the same with the back sprite there, you can see its entire body now, including its little tail. Finally for today, if we take a quick look at Gorbis's size, we can see at 1.8 meters it's slightly longer than Huntail, but still not long enough to really be a threat, I would say, to myself or Ash in size. So guys, that's it for today's episode of Pokemon Origins, I hope you enjoyed it, please leave it a like and a comment down below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll be seeing you all next time, goodbye my friends.